Now, it's not a huge secret. Our big, beautiful planet is dying. With man's first appearance on Earth around 200,000 years ago, we have done more damage to our amazing blue home in the last 100 years than all of those 199,000 before combined. But if you look at the world today, it seems the current generation is doing a lot more than the previous has to help take care of the Earth. Now, with the incentives to purchase electric cars, making solar power a global source of power, some of our instincts are firing on all cylinders. But there is one product that we are probably all guilty of, and that is our trash consumption and the concept of recycling. And one thing that I have noticed in Germany is that they're doing an amazing effort in recycling. But I wanted to get into how this tradition even started and what is really going on with German trash on this episode of Zea Deutsch. So as an American living in Germany, when I first seen the method of recycling in Germany, I was like, dang, y'all killing it, boy. That is crazy. Not only is it the complete norm in Germany, but it's like everybody was on the same wavelength. Besides the obscene trash buildup in major cities within residential areas, recycling is taken very seriously and was basically like a complete 180 of everything that I was used to. I mean, in my hometown of Florida, to us, everything is trash. Hey, I just got this new Amazon package and I got this big old trash. What about this plastic bag that I have here for this Chinese takeout food that I have? Trash. And these old clothes that I don't wear any? Trash. I mean, as an average daily consumer, I can confidently say about 95 out of 100 Americans probably don't know where their local recycling plant even located, or even the fact that they have a local recycling center. I sure don't, but in Germany, it's the total opposite. See, in most residential zones, you will have an assortment of recycling bins in order to sort and separate your trash. And trust me, it's definitely something you wanna do. But if you choose not to recycle and are caught doing so, you can face a fine that is up to $2,800. What? You wanna pay $300 for some damn trash? No, Rick, three grand. 3,000. Yeah, almost three Gs. And that's just for trash. That's literally more than I've spent on all my used cars, broski. But how did this system come into place? And what effect did it have on the rest of Europe? Meet Klaus Tupfer. Now, Klaus was Germany's environmental minister in the early 1990s. And he headed a then initiative called the Grüner Pont. This is considered one of the biggest initiatives that kicked off all of Europe's recycling scheme. And later in the following year, becoming a German law called the Verpackers Ordnung. Now this scheme basically goes like this. When a company wants to get started, there are a myriad of licenses they have to pay for. The license to become a business, taxes, and a bunch of other bulls. I don't know the exact licenses, man. I'm a YouTuber. I don't own a business in Germany yet. But usually there are a bunch of fees that come with creating a business and selling its goods. Now, with the addition of the green point, one of these additional fees would be the organization and return of your trash. Now, you might be asking, what the hell are you talking about? Why would I want my own trash bag? Well, with the new Gruner Punk system, this requires companies to collect and recycle their packaging items themselves. Yes, this means that every product that is sold to you that is packaging is required to collect and remove their own waste that they have given to you. Whoa! Now you must be wondering, does every company have to do this? No. Of course not, they actually don't. But with more than 90% of German companies doing so, there's a big reason why. See, under the Packaging and Waste Directive for the European Union, if a company is not under the Green Dot system, they must collect recyclable packaging themselves, and failure can do so can cost them an hefty fine. Even though these companies are required to pay licensing fees to become part of the Gruner Punk system and get that really cool sticker on the back of their packages, it makes the companies more accountable for the trash that they're packaging and they are selling to you, encouraging manufacturers to cut down down on the packaging as this can save them the cost on licensing fees. We're just trying to save some trees here, people. So what's up with these plastic bottles that we keep seeing YouTubers in Germany talking about? This is basically free money. Well, introduced in 2003, the fine recycling system encouraged drink manufacturers to use refillable bottles and consumers to return them to recycling centers. Now, this works in two ways. When you go into your local grocery store and you pick up your favorite drink that you wanna buy, 
Well, that price tag that you see might say 99 cents, you end up paying 124 for it. Now, why is that? Well, basically you're required to pay a deposit on the bottle that you purchase. But if you bring that bottle back to a recycling agent, then you are rewarded with the initial 25 cent deposit becoming a win-win for both manufacturer and consumer. To make it more relatable for Americans, it's basically the exact same as our taxable income. See, when you are employed in America at the beginning of the following year, you are required to file your federal taxable income. And depending on your relationship status, kids, income status, and other determining factors, you are issued a refund of money if you're poor and broke like me. Now, the feeling is that you have in some way received money, but it's actually the money that you were paying for taxes all along anyway. So it's like extra so you know when when but the big question is what is happening with all these recyclable goods and is Germany one of the top recycling leaders in the world like everyone says they are well yes and no so in an ideal world the process of recycling trash is simple in our minds you buy and use a product you recycle it the manufacturer gets it and uses it again now that's all good in theory but usually it doesn't go down like that See, let's take the number one recycling killer today, which is the big and bad material of plastic. Since its creation during the Industrial Revolution, this cheap, super pliable, and useful synthetic was used to create materials today at a fraction of the cost to produce a different material. But one bad side is that this thing sucks when you try to recycle it. Because plastic is a synthetic, their material has no naturally occurring organism that can break the material down at all. And when you try to recycle plastics with each other, it ultimately becomes a lower quality than its original form. Now, not only does quality become an issue, but the art of collecting, sorting, and storing these cheaply made consumables becomes expensive. Basically, for most companies, it becomes cheaper to create and use newly made plastic than it does to properly sort them out and use them again. And this is how articles like this have come into play. With Germany being known around the world as being one of the most efficient and best recycling countries in the world, 6,000 miles across the globe, around 114,000 pounds of German plastic trash was exported to Malaysia. And if this is news and alarming to you, know that Germany is only the third highest exporter of recycling trash in the world, right after the United States and Japan. But this is not just a Germany thing. Many countries Countries all over the world find it cheaper and easier to send their trash and recyclables to other countries because shipping plastic waste abroad costs less than disposing of it properly at home. With China being one of the biggest processors taking in around half of the world's waste, plastics and metals in 2016 alone, now becoming one of the world's superpowers, all of that was halted in January 2018. This forced countries to scramble trying to find alternatives for their new trash problem. And with more people consuming and waste wasting things more now than ever. Much of the Southeast Asian countries have taken up the slack and many of them basically dispose of this trash by burning them illegally. So with that being said, what do you think about the recycling initiative? Is it worth all the hype? Are there ways we can improve it? And do you think it's fair that you can be given a $3,000 fine ticket for not recycling something that's probably gonna end up burned or buried in another country anyways? Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure you let me know how you feel about it in the comments below. My name is Chris in Germany with Soldier of Life. Throw away your trash, man. Let's help. The world is, we're dying, dude. We got to help each other. Hey, man, if you throw it out the window, I'm going to find you. That's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next one. Peace.